Hi everyone, welcome to Homeschool Autism Life. My name is Jamie and today's video is going to be a bit different because I am doing an open collaboration with Rooted in Rest and the Wall, I'm going to say it wrong, Waldoc Way. Um, they've kind of opened it up to us YouTube uh, mamas out there who are homeschoolers and we're trying to make kind of a well they are they're trying to make kind of a database or a like subject line for new mamas out there who are coming into homeschool and are maybe feeling a bit overwhelmed by trying to plan or what does a morning basket look like or how do I get my kids to do this that, or the other thing and once a month they're going to do video and so I thought I would share uh, how I organize and plan our homeschool and the reason why I thought I would share my voice in this is because I'm kind of stuck in the middle. <laughs> I have been homeschooling my autistic son for the last three and a half years and then COVID-19 happened and I am now going to be adding my girls to our homeschool world. We had kind of a trial period and co-teaching is actually a lot harder <laughs> than homeschooling and being responsible for yourself. So that's what I am doing today. A little bit different from my regular viewers, but I hope you're still interested and enjoy it. Uh, for those of you who are new to my channel, I just thought I would say hello and give you a brief overview. Like I said earlier, I have an autistic son who is a reluctant learner and his learning time is very restricted. He also has sensory issues with holding a pencil which makes homeschooling very interesting and there's a lot of adaptations that need to happen in order for us to get the work done. And when I say work done, it's not on a schedule. It's really based on his willingness to do this, that, or the other thing. And sometimes he tells me he wants to do math instead of language arts. And I go, yeah, got it. <laughs> as far as my girls are concerned, I have two daughters, one who's a great, great learner. And she's got this amazing memory, but she gets bored easily. And she does not practice her best effort. And so that's really what I would like to really instill in her and then my youngest daughter had a lot of difficulty with um, adenoid and tonsil issues and then we found out she needed eye therapy to help her eyes work so that she could learn how to read and do that so we're really focused on helping her learn how to love learning but also reading because even at almost nine you say let's read a book and she runs the other way so that's my homeschool life those are the kind of overseeing goals and stuff like that so let's get to our planner so this is my planner it is just a binder i struggle with spending lots of money on planners and I'm cheap. I will admit it. I'm cheap. And so <laughs> I'm also an artsy type person. And so it's really hard for me to spend lots of money on something that I might be able to make myself. And so if you're interested in knowing how I made this planner or anything like that, feel free. Um, I'm going to leave a link down below to how I made this planner. And yeah, it's been working great for me for the last several years. And and there are people who have already made free stuff for, for printing out and so that's what I've done. So I don't have a fancy camera that I can turn around so I kind of do this this way. So this is my year at a glance and I really have decided to use this as a way to make sure that my girls are socialized. So if you're new to homeschooling, you've probably heard somebody say, oh no, but what about their socialization? And will they become stunted because they were suddenly homeschooled? And the answer is no. But for our particular case, we have an autistic son as I've said before, and he really, really prefers to be with his Xbox or in his comfortable home. And there have been some dangers. Um, he used to elope 
and stuff like that. And so anytime we open that door, essentially the dangers go up significantly. And so we ourselves have become hermits. And so I'm very conscious of making sure that my girls get to see their friends. So this I'm going to be using specifically for um, friends who are near, friends who are far, to write down when they have PD days. So that's the school system's Fridays off. <laughs> we call ours Fun Friday. They call them PD days. And I want to write or you know, make a mark so that I know to contact that person or their parents on a, the week before and just say, hey, can we do a play date? Or hey, can we do a Facebook Messenger, you know, video chat or whatever. So that's essentially what I'm using that. So far, none of them have gotten back to me yet, but it's still summer, so I'm not anticipating that. So I was working on this earlier on, trying to make sure. So I'm just going to skip ahead to where we actually are. Do, 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 do. I didn't know I had so many pages. Okay, that's why. All right, so September is not really here. So I've got my August thing in here. But again, life happens. And so I really need to actually start school in on the 17th is when I've decided to start it. Sorry, I didn't. 17th. I've decided to start school because I am due to have a surgery whenever they phone me. And so I'm really trying to get two weeks ahead so that I have at least two weeks where I'm not trying to do school. And I have a little bit of time, even though it's supposed to take me six to eight weeks because that that's the way that works right <laughs> with autistic children and regular typical children it is amazing how six to eight weeks is one of those things and I'm going to try and make sure that I take care of myself and all of that but just give myself a two-week buffer period is kind of the idea behind that so I haven't written it down because I wasn't planning on starting as early but again, all of this I've written in pencil. So the next thing I wanted to share is that I am doing a, a curriculum called Gather Round Homeschool. And the reason why I'm really excited about it is because it is it has taken nine subjects and put them all in one unit subject, nine to 12 subjects, anyway you get the idea. I'm going to put a link down below to the Gather Around Homeschool site for anyone who's interested. I The, the thought of trying to keep up with my girls' education, uh, meet expectations, all of that was a little bit overwhelming at first, and then I found this, and I am super excited about it. And so we're doing a unit study on Africa as our first one, and that was something that my children picked out. So you'll see how I've done it. I've got a video too explaining how I figured out how many lessons and all of that crazy stuff because it can get really overwhelming and busy. So, uh, but I've written down, this is the page that I've used to write down what we're going to do that morning. And then the afternoons hopefully are free. But as far as school, so we've got Gather Around Homeschool. Math is the one thing that you do have to add to Gather Around because they don't do that one subject. And then I'm choosing to do Story of the World as an extra. Music lessons like playing the piano, um, Hoffman Academy I really recommend on YouTube. And then we're doing some typing, we're doing some library, if the library is open, <laughs> we're doing some spelling, we're doing music study, hymn study, and that sort of thing. So I've got this all written out and scheduled out according to when I want to finish. So for Gather Round Homeschool unit studies, you can do it all in one month or you can do it in six weeks like I am because I really want to be able to chase down some of the extras. So. The next page, and I was silly and put the, dot, or the hole punch on the wrong side. So this next page is one of the pages that I do specifically for my girls. And this one I've used specifically for Gather Around Homeschool as well, but I will probably fill in some of the math and some of the other things. But the, the notes, I've filled in all of the books that I wanted to get specifically for, this right here, 
And then I've only done a week at a time. And you'll notice everything is written in pencil. And I've done that for the reason that I had already mentioned, my life may change drastically in a short time and I wanted to make sure that if we don't get through something, I'm not having to go, oh no, and replace everything. Same deal for why I've only done the first week. Now you'll notice that there's no dates and I was, I thought about putting the dates in, but again, life is busy and I am not sure what's going to happen too far in the future. And so this is what I've chosen to do. So with Gather Around Homeschool, they have 20, my brain, yes, they have 20 separate lessons. And so each one I've picked a day. And then I've also picked Thursday, which is a really busy day for us um, to actually have just kind of a catch up if we didn't get something done. So I really wanna follow the interests of my kids. And so if there's something they really wanna look up or whatever, I don't wanna be going, well, you have to finish those pages, you have to get those pages done. I want to have a little bit of wiggle room on Thursday to actually complete that. And then Friday is, again, I'll write that out, but I haven't done it because I'm really not sure what's going to happen. Um, our fun Friday, but also that's our video day if it's raining or snowing here, which is entirely possible in September because I live in Canada. Um, all of those things I, I want them to be able to do. And so there's a little bit of backwards planning for me, especially in this season of my life, that I am allowing a lot of grace and a lot of flexibility for my own self. <laughs> because otherwise, I will go crazy going, I had this scheduled and it's not working, a roar, why? So the next thing is uh, the to-do list I just wrote here printed because I didn't, I needed something to write. So I've got our read alouds, I've got our movies that we could watch, crafts and recipes. Um, there's a recipe book that comes with the gather around homeschool or you can purchase separ separately with their unit that I did because I have a cook in my kids, my, one of my daughters wants to be a chef. And then assigned books. And so this is my, just my brain, put it down and then what we do, what we watch, I'll just highlight or circle. And so then I have a record of what we did that was extra. Now this page is for my son. And so we do two separate things with him. We have his academic stuff and then we have his therapy program. So we do something called the Sunrise Program. It's from the Autism Treatment Center of America and it is remote, which is awesome because we couldn't afford to go down to Massachusetts. And so this is a way that we can, without having lots of people enter our home, OT and specialists and um, speech therapists and all of that to still help um, him learn the skills of social relational stuff that he missed when he was younger due to his autism. And so with him, I really, really, really have learned over the last three and a half years to do the method of unplanning or backwards planning or whatever the, the term is. So a lot of things are dictated by my son. How did he sleep? How did I sleep? How is he feeling? Is he feeling well or is he grumpy for some reason? And so a lot of that can dictate what we do. And that's why this is not filled out. I have a goal. So the first part of this is just the things that we can do to um, do in his sunrise playroom is what I meant to say. And then this is my goal. I would like to be able to do two or three sessions in his playroom with his mom. We have some volunteers who do some. We're losing one of them, so one volunteer. But I want to be able to do two playroom sessions, sunrise playroom sessions with him. And then I think I wrote two math pages and two gather around homeschool pages. This means that it's going to take us a lot longer to go through 
um, the gather around homeschool stuff, but at the same time, that way I can just write down what we've accomplished rather than look at a list of things that I go, okay, this is what we need to get done and then fail week after week after week. The other thing I found really helpful is to write down why something wasn't accomplished. Why didn't we get to that thing? So if on Sunday, he didn't sleep and we were up till crazy hours of the day. I can just write two hours of sleep, dairy and grumpy was not worth pushing because one of the things that they say for special needs kids in particular is if they are in a place where they are sensorily overloaded, they're exhausted, they're tired. One of the issues that we found last year was he had a wiggly tooth that was driving him insane and it was sensorily overloading everything else. So it's not, not an ideal time to try and get him to learn something new, learn how to talk, learn how to interact. Right now he's just like, get it out, get it out, get it out. <laughs> so that's essentially my planner in a nutshell. It just goes through the different months and I wanted to share it with those of you who are new because I know a lot of special needs parents are feeling that they're pushed into uh, homeschool for the safety of their kids who have immune deficiencies or whatever. And so I wanted to share this just so that it might give you some help, it might give you some pointers, and really my biggest piece of advice, my biggest piece of advice is give yourself grace. Whether you have special needs or not, give yourself grace. The first year you are just trying to get your sea legs under you <laughs> and Honestly, it's going to be okay. You have so much love for your kids and you want them to succeed more than any of their teachers or school did before you. So trust that you're going to figure it out and it'll be okay. Thanks for watching guys. I hope that this has been helpful and we will see you hopefully on the next couple of videos. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.